Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to see many examples of groups and then uh, we will actually focus on subgroups of uh, the group of integers. Okay. To begin with, uh, let us start with uh, the group of integers, so which is uh, denoted by EZ. So, this is the set of integers. So, very explicitly, so this is 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and so on. Okay. So, with respect to addition, so this set is actually a group. So, this addition is actually a binary operation which is defined from z cross to z. So, you know that given a b which are integers, we talk about the image being just a plus b. Okay. So, you must have seen already, so the properties of this addition. So, it satisfies associativity, closure property is already very clear from the definition and then you have this uh, unique element 0 which acts as identity element with respect to addition and then given a you have minus a which is the inverse with respect to the addition. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check that z plus indeed a group. So, note that this is somewhat more than a group. Okay. So, for example, if I take two integers, if I add them a plus b which is also same as b plus a and this is true for all a b in z. So, this kind of extra property is called commutativity of the group. Okay. If you have this extra property, then you call that group as abelian group. So, what we actually just observed e z plus is indeed an abelian group. So, in general what is abelian group? Abelian group is a group. So, let me just write it down. So, you take G star. So, this is a group. So, this is said to be. Okay. So, most of the time we actually suppress the notation star. So, it is understood that whenever we talk about the group, so there is this binary operation behind that. Okay. So, we say that instead of G star being a group, we simply say that G is a group okay? and G is also said to be abelian. So, G is said to be abelian if A star B is same as P star A for all A, B and G. So, this is the definition of abelian groups. Okay. So, e z plus is one such example. So, there are uh, many other examples that you must have seen. For example, you can prove that if you take the set of all rational with respect to addition, so this is also a billion group. And then you take for example, r plus okay, the set of all real numbers with respect to again addition. So, that is also a Bayesian group. Similarly, you can take complex numbers with respect to addition. So, that is also a Bayesian groups. So, I will leave it to you to think about. So, the two groups that we have seen in our previous lectures, only the set of all possible moves that you can perform on Rubik's cube and then the set of all symmetries of this ice crystal flake that we consider. So, just uh, try to see whether they are actually abelian groups or not. Okay. So, the answer is no, both of them are not abelian. So, I will leave it to you to check why they are not abelian. So, you have to find two possible moves. Okay. So, applying m1, m2 is not same as m2, m1. So, that is what you have to check. Okay. So, uh, before actually moving forward, what I want to do 
I want to give you some more examples ok. So, just coming from the object that you know already ok. So, for example, we can take the set of all matrices ok. So, that is uh, again a group with respect to addition. So, you can take any n by n matrices ok. So, for example, you can take uh, this uh, set of all n by n matrices even over integers ok. So, if you take m1 of z which is the set of all n by n matrices ok with in integers entries. So, that means we say over integers. So, this is all possible matrices a j. So, this is n by n such that this a j they are integers for all i j. So, let us not equal to n. Let's not equal to so, then what will be the addition that you can define on this set of all matrices? So, you just define the addition to be just the coordinate wise addition. So, each position you just add the numbers that are there in that position. So, for example, if I take A i j, so that is the matrix capital A and then you take the matrix capital B B P to be B i j, then what is A plus B? A plus B is just you just add in the i j th position A i j is there and B i j is there, you just add those two numbers in that i j th position ok. So, that is your addition. So, I will leave it you to check ok. So, here the exercise this m 1 of e z with respect to this addition that we have defined ok. So, that form a group it is indeed abelian group. Okay. So, now uh, this is one such now you can also change uh, the entries ok. So, this e z you can replace for example, by rationals, reals, complex numbers and if you know what is a field you can also replace with any field ok or if you know what is commutative ring you can re replace with that. But anyway you can actually stick with ok some examples like q, r, c and so on. So, we will see later that uh, there are other interesting uh, rings that will come from this arithmetic modulo n we can also replace with that ok. So, here is the very interesting group again that can be defined again using matrices ok. So, those are all like you take n, n by n invertible matrices ok. For example, you can take m 1 of r. So, that is the set of all n by n matrices where entries are from real numbers. So, that means over r. So, in this m 1 of r I am going to define a subset ok which I call it g l n r. So, which is a subset of m 1 of r. So, what is that? It is collection of all invertible matrices. You take those capital A from m 1 of r such that. So, there are many equivalent actually conditions for invertibility. So, one of the condition is for example, determinant of A being non-zero ok. You can take those matrices in R such that the determinant of A being non-zero ok. So, then this set is indeed actually a group with respect to multiplication of matrices ok. So, you have this multiplication of two matrices. So, given A and B suppose A is given to be some A i j and then B is given to be some B i j. So, then we can talk about this multiplication A B. So, that is another matrix C i j where C i j is actually obtained from taking the ith row, row of this capital A 
and then jth column of this capital B and then multiplying entry wise and adding them. Okay. So, let me just uh, demonstrate what is this CIJ. So, you take the ith row A i 1 etcetera A i n this is the ith row inside the capital A and then you take jth column. So, B 1 j B 2 j etcetera B and j. So, this is your B. So, then you take each entries like this the first entry and the second entry and the nth entry. So, you just multiply them term by term A i 1 B 1 j plus A i 2 B 2 j plus etcetera plus A i n plus B n sorry product. B n j. So, then this term is your C i j. Okay. So, then what is C i j? C i j is summation A i k p k j where k range from 1 to n. So, this defines multiplication between 2 n by n matrices. So, now it is not hard to see if A is invertible and B is invertible then the product A B is also invertible. So, that you can actually obtain from the determinant formula. So, determinant of A B is equal to determinant A times determinant B. So, using that formula you can easily see that if determinant A is non-zero and determinant B is non-zero then the product determinant A B is also non-zero. And once A is invertible, then A inverse is also invertible that is easy to see. So, I will leave it to you to check associativity of this uh, multiplication and so on. So, in particularly, so this set G L of R with respect to the multiplication of matrices. Okay. So, that form a group. It is not hard to check J L n of R is actually abelian if and only if n equal to 1. Okay. Even 2 by 2 matrices if you take it is not abelian. So, it is not hard to find examples. Okay. I will leave it to check. So, it is not abelian if n is greater than or equal to 2 and n equal to 1 you know it is just uh, set of all non-zero real numbers and that is actually is abelian that is not hard to see. Okay. <coughs> so, these are all some examples that are already familiar to you. Okay. So, here is another important example coming from linear algebra. So, if you take a vector space to begin with vector space is actually a group okay it is group with respect to the addition it is indeed abelian group for example let us stick with uh, very particular examples of vector space we can take r2 okay so r2 is what it's collection of tuples xy where xy is coming from r so this r2 we can define point wise addition okay and scalar multiplication is again point wise scalar multiplication that makes this R2 into a vector space. But if you take just this addition to be point wise, so that also actually gives you group. So, you take x1 plus x2 and y1 plus y2. So, this you define to be your addition then R2 with respect to this addition is an abelian group. Okay. So, that is something very easy to see. So, now very similar to this you can also define Rn. So, which is set of all n tuples x1 etcetera xn and then take all this xi coming from R where I from 1 to n. 
again what you do if you take x bar and then y bar you define to be so where x bar is given by this x1 etc xn and the y bar is given to be this y1 etc yn so then x bar plus y bar is nothing but x1 plus y1 plus etc sorry xn plus y so this is the tuple that is associated with that x bar plus y bar so it is some element that you are defining to be okay that so in particularly so this rn with respect to this plus becomes an abelian group again that is something easy thing to check i will leave it to you to check okay so this is about like being just vector space finite dimensional vector spaces over real numbers okay so again so since we are talking about group having just a binary operation that satisfies some properties so we will be able to allow many many examples okay so that is the beauty of this abstraction for example what we can do we can also take infinite tuples okay there is no need to take finite tuples so we can take what is called this r infinity and then you can consider this infinite tuples where all this x i s are coming from r where i range is from 1 to etc so basically you are considering all sequences real sequences so then you can define the addition and uh, addition on this so for example if you take x bar to be x1 etc xn and then y bar to be y1 etc yn so then the again as before you do the point wise addition so that will give you addition on this space okay so then now again you can check r infinity with respect to this is an abelian group so this is somewhat allows more possibilities okay for example very similar to this you can also talk about like matrices having infinite rows infinite columns okay so for example you can talk about a matrix so that actually starts with here and then this number of columns they are infinite number of rows they are also infinite okay so we can actually just define them okay indexed on n cross n so that is possible now the way we define addition on the finite matrices that will be actually that will go through here as well so that will actually make again that set into a group with respect to the addition that we have defined okay so what is this so this is uh, the set capital m so i don't want to give any name for this so let's call it maybe m infinity so let's consider only the real matrices where uh, uh, all the entries are real so then so this is those matrices a j now indexed on n cross n that means you have a 1 1 a 1 2 and so on so it goes all the way a n a 1 n and so on similarly a 2 1 and so on a some n 1 so it never stops okay so some typical i j entry will be here <coughs> all of them are real that is all so a i j they are all real for all i j coming from n so you define now given a i j and then b i j you define the addition to be that component by the addition a i j plus b i j so this makes this set m infinity r into a group okay so you check all the properties of group and then see uh, what what group it is like abelian or non abelian and so on so note that uh, it is not that easy to actually define multiplication in this uh, infinite matrices okay 
So, because we are possibly allowing all the entries to be non-zero, okay. for example, you can take all the entries to be 1, then if you want to apply the rule that we actually uh, had it for the finite matrix, then we get into the trouble, then we will be actually summing once infinitely many times. Okay. So, you see some more possibilities are happening okay, by introducing group as abstractly set with operation binary operation satisfying some properties. But some other things that we have seen earlier goes through, some other things may not go through that is also possible. Okay. Okay. So, here is a group that is actually most important group in my opinion called symmetric group. Okay. So, this is something uh, very, very important to understand. So, we will study symmetric groups uh, in uh, much details later, uh, but I want to give you some examples first. But before that, it is easy to define what is symmetric group in general. Okay, so, that is the best way. So, what we can do? We can start with some set X. Okay. So, let us begin with non-empty set just to avoid some trivialities. So, let us start with non-empty set. So, set is just uh, you know that collection of some well-defined objects. So, there is a very precise way of defining sets. Okay. Sets are supposed to satisfy many axioms. But most important thing is if I give you some element, you should be able to say whether that element is in the set or not. That is the most important property of a set. So, there is no other extra structure on capital X. Okay. But we want to actually define a group that naturally acts on this capital X. So, I will make this action of the group and all very precise later, but you can just intuitively view okay, what I mean by the action. Okay. Basically, it actually uh, just somewhat permutes the elements of capital X, okay. that is the what we mean by action. So, because we do not have any other structure, there is nothing to preserve, okay. you just make it act. So, because group is something that actually has what is called inverse. Okay. So, think about that example that we had before Rubik's cube, all possible moves on the Rubik's cube. Each move actually what it did? It is it actually just took the small cubes that, that is the part, those are all the part of the bigger cube. Okay. So, basically the bigger cube is made from the small cubes. So, what uh, the moves did? Moves actually just moved those small cubes into some other positions that is all. Right? So, that way this capital X also you think it as collection of elements. Okay. So, the group if it is acting on this capital X, so it just should take the element of capital X to some other element of capital X. So, this elements of capital X you think like they are those small cubes. Okay. Capital X is like a Rubik's cube and the elements of capital X as small cubes. So, the group what it should do? It just should take one element to another element and so on. But each once the group is actually it is like a move, it should have a reverse move. So, that means it should have inverse. So, the identity should be like doing nothing. Okay. So, that way we will be able to define the action of the group on this set X. Okay. So, here is the natural group that naturally acts on X. So, that is called the symmetric group which we denoted by S of X. So, what is this? So, this is those functions from X to X such that F is a bijective function. So, I hope all of you are familiar with uh, what is function, bijective function and so on. So, those things will not be defined here. So, I just assume you know those things. So, you take 
s of x to be set of all bijective functions. So, this is set of all bijective functions from x on to x. So, now I can define this binary operation on this s of x what is called so it is called composition so composition of maps or composition of functions okay so all of you know what is composition i believe so if you take two bijective function and you compose them then you again get a bijective function so you have a bijective function from x to x call it f and then you have another bijective function from again x to x so then you can define this composition okay so which is defined to be g composition f okay so this is your unique element associated with fg so given fg you just send it to g composition f. So, this is a map from s of x cross f of x to s of x. So, know that if f is bijective and g is bijective, so then f g composition f is also bijective. Okay. So, how this g composition f is defined? So, on given element x, it is defined to be g of f of x for any x in capital X. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to actually check. So, all the axiom of groups are satisfied by this s of x composition. So, note that here this is not the traditional way of writing. So, we are composing in the opposite way because we want to apply f first and then apply g first. So, then in the language of functions we write it as g composition f, but if you want to use star then you want to write it like f star g. Okay. So, when you when I say f star g, but what do you mean by that? So, you are applying f first and then g later. Okay. So, in the function language we write it as g composition f because this is the formula that we want to actually implicitly remember. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check this is actually a group and it is not that hard to see that s of x is almost always non-abelian is non-abelian if the cardinality of x is at least 2. So, if there are 2 elements, so then you can see that, so this group is not abelian. Okay. So, you can actually take it as excesses. For example, let us say x has 2 elements. So, let us work it out what happens. Okay. Let us see at least some uh, small examples. So, let us say x has 2 elements a b. Okay. So, we are talking about all possible bijective function from x to x. So, because we are talking about bijective functions, so let we can see that uh, what are all the possibilities. Since we are only working with two elements, it is easy to write down pictorially what happens. You can put x in one box and then another x in another box. So, then by mapping means you can just put a arrow between them, between the elements and then you can just look at all possible functions. For example, one function is just mapping a to a and b to b. So, this is called identity function. So, that is the identity element in your group. Okay. Another function is you can map uh, 
a to a sorry a to b and then b to a. So, you can just swipe them. So, now see the possibility of a mapping ok. So, a should map to a sorry what are the possibility of mapping a. So, a if you map it to a then b should not be mapped to a because we want bijective function. So, b should be mapped to b. So, now if, if you map a to b then b has to be mapped to a map to a ok that is the only possibility. So, then this group has only two elements. So, what I said is wrong here. So, this is non abelian if, if it is cardinality is at least 3 ok. So, so then only you have these two elements inside your group. So, this you can call it E and then this you call it f ok. So, then it is not easy hard to see f composition f will be identity. So, basically the group s of x consisting of e and f ok and e f will be f e will be f and e will be e and f f will be e. So, these are all the possible multiplications. Okay. So, this is also something you can actually use uh, what is called word language to express. For example, so we are looking for all possible rearrangements of AB. Okay. So, if you think about it mapping A to A, B to B is keeping AB as, as it is. Mapping A to B, B to A you is just switching AB to BA. Okay. So, that means in one word language what you can do you can write it as a b and then b a. So, this is the these are all the possibilities. So, this is called one word notation. Sometimes we can also use some other possible way of uh, denoting the same thing. So, this is again like uh, more like uh, imitating what function does ok. So, function has domain codomain and because we are dealing with only finitely many elements what we can do we can fix some order on the finitely many elements and then we can see how the function acts on that uh, final on that elements ok. So, once you fix the order you can list them on the top ok like this. So, this is the domain. So, then how the function acts. So, basically you are looking for the image. So, then you can list them at the bottom just below the ele respective elements. For example, the identity what it does. So, then you put this bracket you write a b. So, then what you can do. So, a goes to a with respect to identity b goes to b. The same function that we have actually pictorially denoted here that can be just represented as a b written on the top and a b written on the bottom. And similarly, the second function you can write it as a b and then b a because a is mapped to b and then b is mapped to a. So, this is somewhat another notation. So, this is called permutation notation. So, the bijective functions on x is also called permutation of x. So, basically s of x is also referred as permutation group on capital X. Okay. So, this is again permutation notation. So, if we work with finite set and all matrices. So, this is the abstraction that I asked you to actually appreciate. So, once you list it as a b, if you take some other elements ok call it c d or e f. So, all matrices actually x having two elements. 
So, if you think about okay, some other set let us call it Y and then let us say it contains C D. So, then what will happen to this S of Y? So, there is a natural identification of S of X and S of Y if you think about it. So, the action okay, that we are actually talking about. No? So, the elements of S of X the way it acts. So, that is actually nothing to do with actual elements of capital X. All matters is, is more like a positions. No? So, for example, if you list them as A, B, okay, what the first function identity does? So, the first position is preserved as first position, second position preserved as second position and what this F does which we denoted by E and this one we denoted by F. So, this actually takes the first position element to second position. So, basically it takes A B and then switch to B A. you are just switching them. So, that is all you are doing. So, this is something you can do with any two objects not necessarily with A B. So, that is why this X capital X does not matter. Okay. So, for example, the same thing I can do it with C D also. Okay. So, then if I look at what are all the possible functions here. So, if you use any of this notation you can see that for example, let us look at the one line notation it will be C D and then D C. Basically, it is same as A B and B A. Na? So, there is no difference between them. So, that means the group is the abstract group behind this is not actually changing. Okay. So, this is something we will make it more precise. So, this is what called isomorphism between groups. Okay. So, intuitively it is clear the way the group is acting on this A B or C D is actually same. So, basically the identity element keeps the first position as it is, second position as it is. This element F just switches first position and second position. So, let us do more examples. Okay. Let us look at possible permutations of 3 letters or 3 elements. Okay. Take x to be A, B, C. So, now I am interested in all possible permutation of this. Let us use permutation notation and then see what are all the possibilities or we can also use one line notation. One line notation is somewhat easier to write down, but if you understand that is what permutation also then the dictionary or the translation is very easy. So, let us write down A B C. So, then I can first position I can keep it as it is and then I can just uh, switch them C B. So, this is one and then I can write B A C and then I can fix this and then switch them and then I can start with C and then I can keep A B and then I can switch. So, any possible one word should start with either A, B or C. If, you, if it starts with A, these two are the possibilities. If it start with B, these two are the possibilities. If it starts with C, these two are the possibilities. Okay. So, that means, so these are all the one word uh, possible one words that we can get it from A, B, C. Okay. So, let us see what they mean in terms of permutation or the functions. Okay. Permutation functions that the dictionary is very easy because A, B, C we are keeping it as domain and then we are writing down what will be the image at the bottom. So, we write A, B, C. So, then the first one is just A goes to A, B goes to B, C goes to C. So, this is what called identity. Okay. So, then you have again A, B, C. So, now A is goes to A, B and C are switched. So, then you go to B. So, A, B, C, A goes to B and then B goes to A, C is fixed and then again A, B, C, A goes to B. So, now B goes to C, C goes to A and thirdly again A, B, C, A goes to C, B goes to A, C goes to B. So, this is the one and then you have A B C and then A goes to C, B goes to B and then C goes to A. So, these are all the 6 elements 
that you are getting when you actually look at all permutations of ABC. So, now let us look at one particular example. So, let us take this example. Okay. All you do is you started with the ABC and then you just switch the positions. Okay. So, you switch the position of A to B and then P to C and then C to A. So, that is all you did. So, now if you think about it this ABC does not matter. Okay. For example, I can take something like x, y, z do the same thing. So, all the group does is it takes first position to second position, second position to third position. So, it just permutes them that is all. So, that is the reason that always when we talk about this permutation of finite set, we take that finite set to be 1 to n. We just take 1 to n because any finite set can be ordered okay. indeed well ordered okay. you can it, there is a total order on that you can fix and then you can identify with this 1 to n and then you can just take the symmetric group on this uh, n letters and then see how it acts on this 1 to n. So, that is why so, this A, B, C for example, this one will correspond to 1, 2, 3. So, basically the first position is changed to the second and then second position is changed to third, third position changed to 1. Okay. So, the, the positions what matters first position or second position or third position, the permutation can be understood by changing them. So, that is why taking A, B, C or some other elements x, y, z does not matter. So, abstractly speaking one can fix this set and then we can consider all possible permutations of that set. So, that is enough to actually enough for considering taking any set of n elements and looking at all possible permutation of that particular set of n elements. Okay. So, later we will see we will actually define what is called isomorphism. We will actually very explicitly see the isomorphism between them. But it is intuitively clear what I mean by okay, uh, the action of the group is same on 1 to m or any x1, etc., xn. Okay, so, this is called permutation group. Okay. So, now you can ask this question why it is a group. Okay. So, that is something I will leave it to you to check that is not very hard because this is something I have defined using functions. So, composition of two bijective function is bijective and identity function is you defined to be x goes to x for all x in capital X will be the identity function or you call it E. And inverse function is very clear. So, given bijective function you can define what is called inverse. So, that is fine and uh, uh, associativity will just come for free because you have associativity for composition of functions. Okay. So, in particularly this S of x with respect to this composition of maps or composition of functions that will form a group. So, like I said S of x is non-abelian for whenever x has a at least 3 elements. Okay. So, I will stop here we are running out of time. So, I will continue with uh, more examples and then yeah, subgroups of integers in the next uh, class. Thank you.